So chapter one is electrons, bonds, and molecular properties. Okay. So in this chapter, we will be reviewing all the important concepts that you learned in general chemistry. All right. So let's start with the, with the basics. Right. <clears throat> so what is an atom? So what is an atom? Okay. An atom is a basic building block of matter. Okay. So any kind of matter you have, okay, that's okay, that's made up of an atom, right? So all these atoms come together and form the matter. Okay. So there are five different <clears throat> there are five different phases of matter, right? Five different forms of matter, right? So you can you can find out what different forms of matter you have. Right? But no matter what matter you take, that's made up of atoms. Right? So how does an atom look like? Okay. An atom has a center, okay, and then you have the cloud. Okay. In the center, we have protons and neutrons. And around the nucleus, we have electrons, right? So we have electrons here, right? And inside the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. All right, so that's, that's a structure of an atom. All right. <clears throat> so protons has a charge of plus one. So protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. And neutrons has got no charge. Right. So plus minus zero, no charge on neutrons. Right. So <clears throat> the general structure of an atom. Okay. Let's make it more towards your carbon. Let's so if you have an actual example where you have the carbon, right? So if you look at the periodic table, carbon has two numbers, right? So there's the one number at the bottom, which is smaller and the larger, right? So small and large are two numbers, right? So the smaller number, okay, that is your atomic number. That's atomic number, and the, the larger number is atomic mass number. So atomic number and atomic mass number. Okay. So atomic number signifies that many number of protons you have. So number of protons in an atom. Okay. So that means carbon has six protons and Atomic mass number signifies number of protons plus number of neutrons. All right. So this means you have number of protons plus number of neutrons, the two numbers, total two numbers. And atomic number is number of protons. Right. Now the problem is, if I'm trying to find out electrons, right, how do I know how many electrons carbon has? Right. So in this case, we are to apply a logic. Okay. A logic is, we're looking at a positive and negative charge. Okay. If electrons have negative charge and protons have a charge of plus. Right. And if you want to balance the charge, right, if I have to balance it, I need to have the same number of electrons. Then only there will be charge balance, right? So that means indirectly we also get the number of electrons. So you should have the same number of electrons as number of protons. Right? So indirectly, this number tells you that you also have six electrons, okay, in the car. All right, so now we know 
carbon has six electrons, right? So six electrons. Now we're looking at the nucleus, right? So that's your protons and neutrons, and those electrons are here. Um, So those six electrons are here. Now the question is, are these six electrons, are they random? Are they just moving randomly around here and there? Or there is a proper way these electrons are arranged in an atom? Okay, so the answer is they're not random. They're arranged in a proper order, right? So let's say if you have a nuclear, then you have electrons that are different levels. So let's say you have level one, then you have level two, then there's a level three. So you have all these levels all the way up to seven. <clears throat> so there are seven levels total. All right. And that is called as electronic configuration. So that is electronic. Configuration. Right. So electronic configuration basically means how do we distribute these electrons into different levels, right? So we have seven levels, right? So starting from one, right? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. <clears throat> so you have seven levels, and these levels are further divided into orbitals, right? So level one has 1s2 orbital. Okay. <clears throat> then the second level has 2s2, 2p6. Okay. We will look into detail what these numbers mean, but just for now, that we have seven levels, and those levels are further divided into orbitals. Right. Then we have 3s2, <clears throat> 3p6, 3d10. <clears throat> so 3d6, 3d10, and then you have 4s2, it just keeps going on like this, so 4s2, 4p6, 4d10, 4f14, right? then you have 5s2, 5p6, 5d10, <clears throat> all right. Then you have 6s2, 6d6, 7s2, and 7d6. All right. So this is a chart for electronic configuration. Right? So you don't really have to memorize this chart, but I will tell you which part you really need to know. All right. <clears throat> so how do you make use of this? So that means you have level one. So this is your level one right here. So that's your level one, then level two, level three, and so forth. Right. So level one has S orbital. Okay, so that's your level one. And what orbital is that? That's S orbital. And S orbital can hold maximum of two electrons. So what means here, let's say if you have an orbital like this, one S2. So that means what level is that? That's your level one. What orbital is that? That's your orbital. Right? And the number, superscript number tells you that how many maximum electrons it can hold. So maximum electrons it can hold. So S orbital can hold up to two electrons max, right? P orbital can hold up to six electrons max. Okay, D can hold up to 10 and F can hold up to 14. All right, so here it should be four, five, 40 as well. And so five, P six, sorry. <clears throat> All right, so it can hold up to 
14 F can hold up to 14 electrons, right? So that's what you got, one S, two. <clears throat> so that's your level, that's your orbital, and it can hold up to two electrons max, all right? So now carbon has six electrons, right? So how do we arrange these six electrons into the electronic company? So basically we are only looking at this part, so that's why I say you don't really have to memorize this chart. We only look at probably so we'll only keep it on level three. All right, so we have 3s2, 3p6, and 3d10. So we most likely we don't go beyond this, all right? So the question is, if carbon has six electrons, then how do we distribute the six electrons, okay, into different orbitals? That is your electronic configuration. So what is the electronic configuration of carbon? So six electrons, so you start filling at the bottom, right? So you start filling at the, the lowest level. So that's your innermost level. So that would be 1s2. So 1s2, you got maximum two electrons, then you move up. So that will be 2s2, right? And then you have 2p. So 2p can hold up to six electrons, but we only have six. So what we got here is we got two plus two, so p orbital should only have two electrons. Because we only have total six, so two plus two plus two. <clears throat> All right, so s can only hold two electrons, so we can put two electrons here. Then we move up, All right? So this s can only hold two electrons, so two plus two, and then remaining two will go in the p orbital. So that is the electronic configuration for carbon, right? <clears throat> so let's look at the electronic configuration for other atoms, such as we have nitrogen, right? We have oxygen, okay? And let's take a halogen, which is chlorine. All right, just for practice. <clears throat> so nitrogen has seven electrons, Oxygen has eight and fluorine has nine. All right. <clears throat> so nitrogen will be one S two, two S two, and then <clears throat> we go to, so we have total seven electrons, so we go to two P, so that will be two plus two, so two P should have three electrons. All right, so one S two, two S two, two P three. <clears throat> Oxygen should have one S two, 2s2, 2p, 4. Because we have total 8 electrons, so 2 plus 2 plus 4, 8 electrons, right? <clears throat> Fluorine has 9, so that'll be 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 5. So that is the electronic configuration for carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Okay, so we're going left to right in the periodic table. So make sure you understand the electronic configuration because there are a lot of things that depend on it. It's a very important concept. All right, so now we know the electronic configuration. Okay. Let's find out what are the valence electrons. Okay. So very important concept. Okay, valence electrons. <clears throat> so how do you find valence electrons? So by definition, valence electrons are <clears throat> the electrons in the in the outermost level. Okay. So electrons in the outermost level. Okay. So let's find out how many valence electrons we have for carbon, right? So carbon has, okay, six electrons and electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 2, right? <clears throat> so which is the outermost level for carbon, right? So number one is the innermost, right? So that's what we start. We start from one, two, and we go forward, right? So innermost is one, right? 
So which will be the outermost level for carbon? That will be level two. Because we don't go beyond level three. Oh, sorry, we don't go beyond level two. So carbon has the outermost level, which is two. So in level two, that's where that's where the level is. So in level two, right, how many electrons do we have? So what number tells you the electrons at the top? The subscript number tells you. The superscript side, the superscript number tells you that these are the electrons we have. Okay, so we have in level two, we have total four electrons. So carbon has four valence electrons. All right, again, how do we figure it out? We're looking at the outermost level. And how do you figure out the outermost level? From the electronic configuration. So this, this number means the level, right? so level one, level two. So level two is the outermost because level one is gonna be always the innermost level. Right? So for carbon, two is the outermost level and we have total four electrons here. Because the number on top, that tells you how many electrons we have. Right? So carbon has four valence electrons. Okay. What about fluorine? Let's say if you have fluorine, then how many valence electrons you have in fluorine? Right. So that will be one is two. So to find out the valence electrons, you still, you have to go back to the electronic configuration. Right. So you have one is two, two is two, two p five because we have nine electrons total. So what two, two and two that's nine. Right. <clears throat> and what is the outermost level for fluorine? Two is the outermost level. And how many electrons we have total? We have two plus five, so that will be seven valence electrons. All right. So fluorine has seven valence electrons. So again, everything goes back to the electronic configuration. If you can do electronic configuration, if you write one is to two is to, you know how to use a chart, then you can easily find out the valence electrons. All right, and you'll be surprised as to you how important this concept is. We can apply this in a bunch of different things. All right. right. Next part is predicted number of bonds. So what we're trying to find out in this case is, or in this situation is, how many bonds a carbon can form, right? A nitrogen, halogen, okay? So it works for nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, and halogen. So we're trying to find out how many different bonds they can form, right? So let's go for carbon, right? So how many bonds of carbon can form? And the formula for that is, yeah. So the number of bond is eight minus valence electrons. Right, so if we're looking for carbon, Right, so how many bonds carbon can form? So that will be eight minus valence electrons. So how many valence electrons carbon has? Carbon has four valence electrons, right? So how many bonds carbon can form then? That will be total four bonds. Okay, so carbon can form four bonds max, all right? Let's find out how many bonds a nitrogen can form. Okay, so for nitrogen, how many valence electrons we have for nitrogen? That will be five. Okay, so the nitrogen can form then eight minus five, that will be three bonds. All right. For oxygen, oxygen has six valence electrons. So that should be able to form two bonds. Okay, and fluorine, which is a halogen, so fluorine has seven valence electrons. So that should form one bond. All right. So to summarize our chart, okay, we we have carbon, we have nitrogen oxygen and halogen. So let's say halogen is X that can be chlorine, fluorine, 
So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay. So carbon forms four bonds. That's what we just saw. How many bonds each atom can form? Nitrogen forms three bonds. Right. Oxygen forms two bonds. And halogen forms one bond or fluorine. And it's true for all the halogens. Okay. So it can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Okay. So this is the important, <clears throat> important thing we learned in this chapter here. That how many bonds carbon forms, okay, how many bonds nitrogen, oxygen, and halogen forms. All right. All right. So how do we write Lewis dot structures? <clears throat> So Lewis dot structures, okay, it can be scary, but for, for this class, okay, we don't really have to go into details, but as long as you can remember these three simple rules. Okay. So when you write Lewis dot structures, write only valence electrons. Okay. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, okay, second row elements, such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and halogen, so let's say carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine in this case must be surrounded by eight electrons. So if you have these atoms, they should have eight electrons around them. That is called the octet rule. Okay. And rule number three is each hydrogen must be surrounded by two electrons. Okay. So I usually don't call these two as rules. These are just a confirmation. So the only rule actually is this. Okay. Write only valence electrons. Okay. So let's let's take an ex example now. If you look at the real example, then what is the Lewis dot structure for HF? Okay, we're trying to find the Lewis dot structure for HF. Okay. So we have two atoms, hydrogen and fluorine. Right? So let's write down the two atoms, hydrogen and fluorine. And it says write only valence electrons. So how many valence electrons hydrogen has? Right. So hydrogen has only one electron. Okay. So that should be hydrogen has only one valence electrons. Okay. And then you have fluorine. So write down fluorine has how many valence electrons? Fluorine has seven valence electrons. Right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. So when you have two electrons, then you put them like this, two, and then you have the one electron which is not paired. Okay, that's three electron. Okay, and the reason why I kept it like that, so I can bring the two electrons together, okay, to form the bond. Okay, so what happens next, then you have hydrogen has one electron and fluorine has one electron. So when they have one electron each, they will share. Okay, and when they share electron, they'll be a bond. So that is the Lewis dot structure for HF. If the answer is this, you can also write it like this. You can also write it like this. Which is same as this, okay? Because each bond means two electrons. Because how a bond is formed when Hydrogen share one electron and fluorine will share one electron. When they share one electron each, then you get a bond. So basically, either you write it like this or like this, it's the same. What we usually do is when we share, then there's a bond, and that's how we write an actual bond. Right? But either way, it's fine. Right? Now, we already got our structure. Okay? We already got our structure. Just looking at the first point. So second and third point basically will confirm did you get the structure right or not, All right? So what it says, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and halogen must have must be surrounded by eight electrons. Okay. So do we have eight electrons around fluorine here? Because that's your fluorine. Right? So yes, we have two plus two plus two plus two. It's surrounded by eight electrons. Okay because a bond is two electrons, right? Now rule number three is each hydrogen must be surrounded by two electrons. 
So is hydrogen surrounded by two electrons? Yes. The hydrogen has two electrons around it. Okay. So that means our structure is correct. Okay. So again, the real rule is only number one. And the rule number two and three will confirm that you did you get the structure right or not. All right. So for example, let's say, let's do another example. We write the loose dot structure for NH3. All right. So we have N and H3. All right. <clears throat> So nitrogen is a central atom, right? So nitrogen is central, and we have three hydrogens. Okay, so we have three hydrogens. So I can write down three hydrogens the way I want, right? So I'm writing down hydrogen here, and hydrogen here, and hydrogen here. Okay, just to make sure that we are surrounded by three hydrogens. Right? So NH3. Right? Then we go by the rule number one. Write down only the valence electrons. Right? So how many valence electrons nitrogen has? Right. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. Right. So what I will do, I will write down five valence electrons like this. Okay. So I want to keep one free electron for each hydrogen. I know because I have three hydrogens, they can come and form the bond, right? So hydrogen has one valence electron, one valence electron, and one valence electron. All right. <clears throat> so when you have one electron each. Right? So one electron, one electron, they will share and they will form the bond, right? So then they will share and form the bond. So they share and then they form the bond. So that should be the structure for NH3. Now let's go back and confirm. Do we have eight electrons around nitrogen? So how many electrons are we surrounded by nitrogen here? Okay. Nitrogen has two plus two plus two plus two, right? Each bond is two electrons, so that is total eight electrons. And each hydrogen must have two electrons. So do we have two electrons around each hydrogen? This hydrogen has two electrons, this hydrogen has two electrons, and this hydrogen has two electrons. So we satisfy all three conditions. That means the structure is correct, right? So let's do one more example. So what will be the valence, oh sorry, what is the Lewis dot structure for CH4? Right. So in this case, we have to identify carbon as a central atom. Okay. One atom surrounded by four, right? Same way, one atom surrounded by three hydrogens. So carbon surrounded by four hydrogens, right? So that's a carbon atom right there. And it's surrounded by four hydrogens. So you can write down four the way you want. I'll write down like this, <clears throat> all right? And then you write only the valence electrons. So hydrogen has one valence electron, so each hydrogen has one, okay? And carbon has four valence electrons, right? Now I'm forming four bonds, that means I have to keep them four like this, so I can form the four bonds, right? And then they all share. So carbon shares electron with hydrogen. They all share and that will be the Rule structure for methane, right? <clears throat> so that's your CH4, this is methane. Right, so in this case, what we got, <clears throat> we have hydrogen has two electrons, each hydrogen has two electrons, and carbon has two plus two plus two plus two. So eight electrons, so that has the octet. So that has the octet, that's your octet here. So that means the structure is correct. Okay, so you have to confirm at the end. <clears throat> so you have to follow the rule and confirm the structure. All right, so if you, if you look at nitrogen here, nitrogen has three bonds with hydrogen, right? And then you have the two electrons, okay? <clears throat> so this is called as a lone pair. Called a lone pair, and these are called as the shear electrons. <clears throat> so lone pair of electrons, and these are the shear electrons. 
right? <clears throat> so when nitrogen shares one electron, hydrogen shares one electron, when the two atoms they share one electron each, right? That is called the covalent bond, right? So let's say if you have a hydrogen with one electron and a hydrogen with one electron, so they both share one electron each and they form the bond, right? And that bond is called as the covalent bond. Covalent bond when they, they share each. Right? So then what is the ionic bond? So let's say when you have ions, we have sodium plus and Cl minus. When the ions come together, when positive or negative come together and form the bond, which is NaCl, and that is called as the ionic bond. Right? So covalent bond is formed by the sharing one electron each. In this case, chlorine is donating electrons to the sodium plus because this is electron poor. When the plus charge means it's electron poor, so negative charge is going to the plus to form the bond. Again, this is shared, right? So this is giving the electrons to the plus charge. In this case, they equally share. So when they equally share, they form the covalent bond. When the ions come together, that is the ionic bond. So we have two different types of bonds. Okay, covalent and ionic. <clears throat> so the next part is formal charge. Okay, so how do you assign a formal charge? Right? So what is a formal charge first of all? Formal charge is a charge assigned on each atom in a loose dot structure. So when you draw a loose dot structure, you can assign a charge on each atom. Okay. And you have, there's a formula for that. So formula is formal charge equals to number of valence electrons okay, that we already know, okay, minus number of electrons and atom ohms. Okay, so that can be a little bit tricky, but we'll try to explain, right? So an atom owns all lone pair of electrons. So all the lone pair of electrons it owns and half of the shared electrons. It owns half of the shared electrons. But how do you figure it out? Okay. So if, let's say if you're trying to find out the formal charge on the carbon, right? So what kind of formal charge you have on this carbon right here? Okay, in methane, right? So carbon has how many valence electrons, right? So then we have to go back to the electronic configuration and find out the carbon has four valence electrons, right? So 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So that will be four valence electrons minus, right? <clears throat> how many atom, how, uh, sorry, how many electrons carbon owns? So carbon owns all the lone pairs. So we don't have any lone pairs on the carbon, right? And half of the shared electrons. So how many electrons are shared here? The carbon has. These are all the shared electrons, right? So two plus two plus two plus two. Remember, each bond makes two electrons. So you got two plus two plus two. So eight. So half of eight will be four. Right? So four bond means eight electrons. Okay. So four minus four will be formal charge will be zero. So the formal charge on carbon is zero. So formal charge here is zero on the carbon. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the this is a book's way of doing things, okay? There's another way to do it, okay? Which is an easier one, and I'll tell you what it is. All right, so let's say we have, let's do another example here for us, so. Let's say we're trying to find out the former charge on nitrogen in NH3. All right, so there's the Lewis dot structure for NH3, and we're trying to find out the formal charge on the nitrogen. Okay, so what not charge you have a nitrogen, right? So formal charge will be then number of valence electrons on the nitrogen, right? So nitrogen is how many valence electrons? Nitrogen has seven, so one is two, two is two, two p, three. So that will be five valence electrons. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, right? Minus number of electrons nitrogen owns here. Okay, so you can apply the formula 
all the lone pairs. So how many lone pairs we have? One lone pair has two electrons and half of the shared electrons. So these are the shared, one, two, and three, right? So we have a six, half of six will be three, plus two, that will be five. So the former charge on our anything is zero, okay? So this is the proper way to do it, okay? If it's confusing, okay, then I have an easier way to do it. And in this case, what you need to do is, how do you find out the atom owns? You need to count how many dots and how many sticks we have. Okay. So how many dots and how many sticks, right? So we got two dots and three sticks, so that is five. Okay. So if this is confusing to you, then go by that. Okay. So count number of dots and number of sticks. So number of dots. And number of states. And add them together. So number of dots two and number of states three, that'll be five. Okay. So balance electrons we already know. Five minus five will be four. And you can do the same thing here. How many dots we have? Zero dots. And how many sticks we have? Four sticks. That's why it's four right here. So four sticks. One, two, three. Four. So number of dots and number of sticks. So either you go by this way or this way, it doesn't matter. Okay. Which one is easier for you? All right. So let's maybe do a couple of examples and then we'll start. So, okay. <clears throat> right. So what's the former charge? on fluorine in HF, right? And what the form of charge on oxygen on this? All right, so let's go after the fluorine, right? So fluorine has how many balanced electrons? Right, so fluorine is one S2, two S2, two P5 that has seven balanced electrons, right? Minus how many dots and how many sticks we have. So we have two plus two plus two, six dots and one stick, so seven total. So the formula charge will be zero, all right? Let's look at the oxygen. So oxygen should have, how many balanced electrons on oxygen? Oxygen is one S2, two S2, two P4. So we have six balanced electrons minus number of dots, so we have two plus two plus two, six and one. So oxygen has charge of minus one. Okay, so that's the form of charge on oxygen. So minus one, you can write down minus one like this, or you can just write down minus one. Okay, so it's a very easy concept, okay, but it's very important, right? 